We've looked at the standard example of calculating the net present value and we've got different cash flows. And what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our attention to just a few kind of additional situations that are a little bit more uh, involved or a little bit different from what it is that we've just looked at. And we're going to look at four situations. We're going to look at the situation where we have equal annual cash flows and we don't have to do it each year individually. We're then going to look at the situation where we have equal annual cash flows and then there's an additional cash flow at the end and we'll see that would happen if you sell the equipment at the end. And then we're going to look at the net present value of a perpetual annuity with constant cash flow and then a perpetual annuity with a growing cash flow. And that perpetual annuity is just an income coming in forever, for, for in perpetuity, just goes on perpetually. And so we'll look at these four different situations. None of them are terribly difficult. It's just a matter of we need to understand the tools that we have available and using them to calculate these these present values when we have annual cash flows that are the same when they're the same and then we have something at the end. So again, I don't want you to worry that there's anything here technically difficult. It's just a matter of recognizing the situation and knowing how it is that we're going to address it. So the first example we have is the example of equal annual cash flows. AMC Petroleum Inc., an oil wholesaler, is planning to purchase an additional tanker to haul its oil because of recent sales growth. The new truck will cost $100,000. AMC estimates the after-tax cash flows from the new truck, including the effect of the depreciation tax shield on cash, will be $20,000 per year, and the truck will last for seven years. Okay, so $20,000 a year for seven years, that's the after-tax cash flow that takes into account the depreciation tax shield, just one number that we need to work with. AMC's required rate of return is 10%, and AMC expects no salvage value. The company's tax rate is 40%. Okay, so this is the situation that we have. Now, when we're calculating this, these discounted cash flows, we're going to use the, the table value for an annuity. And an annuity is a constant amount of money at a constant time interval. And so what we need to do is we need to find the annuity table, and it's going to be given to us if we need it. That's 10% and 7 years. And we're going to take that table value and multiply it by $20,000. And that will give us the present value of all seven years of the cash flows. Just one calculation, because it's an annuity. One calculation is going to give us all seven years. So we need to find the annuity table, and this is just copied out of the appendix, but all kinds of sources for something like this. So we're looking for the annuity table, and we need 10% and seven years. Okay, 10% and seven years is going to give us our table value of 4. 868. Okay? So we take that table value, 4.86, put it back into our calculation, back into our formula, and with one simple calculation, $97,360 is the present value of all seven of those years of cash inflows. Okay? Now, what we're going to do then is we're going to take that $97,000 and it goes into our present value calculation, the net present value. $97,000 of inflows and $100,000 of outflows tells us that this project has a negative net present value. So, from a net present value standpoint, this truck, as an investment, would not be beneficial to the organization. Negative net present value, and the net present value is negative. Now, again, it's not negative by a lot, and so we could do the math, and we could say, well, you know, if it's $21,000 of cash flows per year instead of 20, it might become positive. And again, we're not doing that. That's not, our 20,000 should be our best estimate, our expected value. And so with this information that we have right here, this truck would not be a beneficial investment for the organization. Now, the next situation that we look at is when we have those equal cash flows with an unequal amount at the end, one additional cash flow at the end. So, setting up the example, due to recent sales growth, they plan to purchase a truck, the new truck is $100,000, all that same information, except AMC projects that at the end of seven years, it will be able to sell the truck for $30,000. The truck will be fully depreciated for tax purposes, so the full amount received will be taxable as a gain, and the company's tax rate is 40%. Okay, so basically all that same information, except now we're selling the truck at the end, for $30,000. So what this means is the after-tax cash inflow in the seventh year 
is not going to be the same as all of the other after-tax cash inflows. It's going to be greater by $18,000, which is the $30,000 cash we receive from the sale minus the 40% in taxes. So what we're going to do here is essentially two calculations. We're going to calculate the present value of an annuity for six years. Okay, that $20,000 for six years. And then we're going to calculate the present value of that seventh year, which is going to be $38,000, as a single amount. Okay, now, we could also do a seven-year annuity and then the $18,000 as a seventh amount. It would give us the same number, but we're here we're doing a six-year annuity. And then that seventh year tax cash flow, which is bigger, we'll simply do that as a single amount. So we need to start by looking at the present value of the annuity table. Now this time we're doing 10 years at six periods instead of seven. And so we're going to get 4.355 as that table value. That's for those first six years. So that goes back into our formula. $20,000 times 4.355 is $87,100. That is the present value of those first six years of cash flows. Okay. Now, that seventh year of cash flow, that's a little bit bigger, that's from the present value of a dollar table, not the annuity table, but the present, dollar of a, present value of a dollar at 10% for seven years, 0.513. So that $38,000 cash flow in the seventh year gets multiplied by the 0.513, present value 19,494, giving us $106,594 total discounted cash inflows. We subtract that $100,000 investment and we get a net present value of $6,594. So that additional cash we get from the sale of the truck at the end makes this project have an, a positive net present value, whereas without that additional cash flow, it was a negative net present value. Again, this is math. So there's different ways you can do it. You can do seven-year annuity at $20,000 and a single lump sum of $18,000 at seven years. Or what we did here, a six-year annuity, and then one individual cash flow in the seventh year that included both the $20,000 and the $18,000. Again, these aren't difficult. The math isn't difficult. There's an annuity, there's an annuity and a lump sum amount. It's not difficult. We just need to know the tools that are available. If it's the same cash flow every year, that's an annuity. We use the annuity table. If the cash flows are different every year, we can't use the annuity, we have to use the present value of a dollar and just make, cash, or make calculations for each individual year of cash flows. Now, the next two types of examples we're looking at are the net present value of perpetual annuities, and this is where the money is received forever. Not just seven years or 70 years, but the money goes on forever. There's two situations we need to look at. The first is if there's a constant cash flow, it doesn't change. Present value calculation is very simple. It's the annual cash flow divided by the required rate of return. That will give us the net present value of that perpetual annuity. Now, part of what we need to remember is at some point, it's so far in the future, it really doesn't come back to much present value at all. Okay? So if it's a constant cash flow, the annual cash flow divided by the required rate of return. Now, if, on the other hand, it's a growing annuity where every year it gets a little bit bigger, then the calculation is that end of the year one cash flows divided by the required rate of return minus that growth rate. Okay? Now, if it's a growing annuity, clearly the present value is going to be bigger than if it's a constant cash flow because we're taking present values of bigger numbers every year. So these are the two simple formulas, nothing terribly challenging about them, and we'll look at them in a couple of examples. First, the example of a net present value of a perpetual annuity with constant cash flow. So, Perpetual Enterprises plans to invest $40,000 in a project expected to generate after-tax cash flow of $5,000 each year beginning with year one and continuing indefinitely. Perpetual's required rate of return is 10%. What is the net present value of the project? Well, we've got a 10% required rate of return. We've got our $5,000 after-tax cash flow every year. 
Our formula is that annual cash flow divided by the required rate of return. Well, $5,000 annual cash flow divided by the 10% required rate of return is a $50,000 present value of those cash inflows. But remember, we had to invest $40,000 to get it. So the net present value of this investment is $10,000. $40,000 investment, this perpetual annuity of $5,000 a year forever has a present value of $50,000. Net present value, $10,000. Now, the last situation is where we have a growing cash flow, where the cash flow gets bigger each year. So Perpetual Enterprises plans to invest $40,000 in a project. After-tax cash flow at the end of the first year is $5,000, but it expects the cash flow to grow by 5% each year in perpetuity, forever. So the required rate of return is 10%. What is the net present value? Well, again, we have a simple formula. It's the end of that year one cash flow, which we're given, divided by the required rate of return, which is 10%, and the growth rate, which is 5%. And so we do the math. The present value of those cash inflows is $100,000. We subtract the $40,000 we needed to make for that investment, and we're left with a net present value of this project of $60,000. Okay? So if it's growing by 5%, clearly the present value is going to be bigger than if the cash flow in the future doesn't grow. Okay? And so this is the math. So what we've done here is we've looked at some other Example, some other potential situations that you might have to be able to calculate the, the net present value for. We looked at equal annual cash flows, equal annual cash flows with that additional cash flow at the end, and then the net present value of that perpetual annuity with a constant cash flow, and the net present value of a perpetual annuity with a growing cash flow. So we've now looked at the examples of the different types of situations in which you need to be able to calculate the net present value, just kind of every year individually, and then these situations that we've looked at now. So you now have the tools that you need, the situations that you might be faced with on the exam. You have the tools you need to be able to calculate the net present value for whatever situation you get on your question.